$31 round trip. And then from there, I hiked to Schaeffler. And it took about an hour. And you hike up to this restaurant slash lodge. And um, it's about $45 a night to stay up there. Uh, me and my buddy Danny, we decided to stay up there. It's pretty awesome. And we were able to film the sunset over this beautiful Schaeffler Mountain. I mean, it was incredible. Like one of the coolest sunsets in my life. We were able to whip out the FPV drone. It's not as crowded as other areas in Switzerland. And it's just absolutely beautiful. This lodge was awesome. It was $45 a night. And from the viewpoint, you can see three countries. You can see Germany, Liechtenstein, and Austria. And I mean, it, it was awesome. So I'd highly recommend you visit here. It is just one of the coolest places ever. If you're not staying in the lodge, make sure you make it back by seven to the gondola so you can take a ride down. Also in the area, there's a beautiful lake. You can visit one of the most beautiful restaurants in the world that's located in the side of a freaking cave i didn't go there because i didn't have time but if you're in appenzell you might as well so anyways that is it for appenzell now for our second location we're going to head over to probably the most beautiful place in the world in my opinion and it is the beautiful town of lauterbrunnen this is a valley of over 75 waterfalls this is where Authors such as J.R. Tolkien got inspired for like books such as Lord of the Rings. And when you go there, you're going to understand because it is just absolutely magical. It's this like little town nestled in this just valley with tons of waterfalls. It is so green. There's like cows all around and it's just magical. I found this really cool park that had like a ping pong table and just a bunch of cool things right at the base of the waterfall. We walked around. We went to a co-op store to get the Swiss essentials like the chocolate and uh, coke and uh and we just walked around we had an awesome time i mean it was just such a magical experience so if you are in switzerland i'd highly recommend you go to lot because it's gonna blow your mind after a lot the next day we made the journey to the top of europe to the infamous place of jungfrau Juk. i think that's how you say it but anyways, so we woke up way early and we took the train from Lauterbrunnen all the way to Jungfrajok, which is the top of Europe. We bought our tickets. Normally, during the summertime, it's about $240 per person. But if you go in the morning, it is $120 for the early bird special. So I'd highly recommend you do that to save some money. Um, but anyways, it's, it's quite the train ride up the mountains. You make a few stops. And then you're going to go through the mountain. Um, halfway through the mountain, you're going to make a pit stop. And you'll be able to get out and you can see the glacier. I mean, I've never seen a glacier so close up before. There's a lot of mountaineer people that were making a pit stop because they're actually hiking across this glacier to reach the top. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anyways, after that pit stop, you're going to get back on the train and you'll make it up to the top. And um, you'll get off and you'll walk through a bunch of tunnels. It was a little bit confusing for me. But anyways, we got up to this, it's called like the ice plateau, I think. And uh, we were able to get some really cool shots from there. And there was no one there because we were the first people up on the train. So that was awesome. After we went to the top of the Junk for Jack and we were able to get just awesome views of the whole entire area. There was just this really massive glacier. Um, I mean, it was just absolutely phenomenal. There was a lot of people which, I mean, it's kind of a downer. After that, we were able to walk in the glacier tunnels and these are just spectacular. It's these tunnels of ice that you're able to walk through and there's just a lot of ice sculptures. It's just a really surreal experience. I mean, you could also walk around outside. We found some other cool places. There's some other activities such as like tubing and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was just a great time up at Junk for Jock. We took the train ride down, we made a little pit stop, and then we headed down to the town called Wangen. And Wangen is right above Lauterbrunnen, and the only way you can get there is you can only take a train or you can walk there because there are no cars allowed in the city. Wangen is great because you are able to get a view of the Lauterbrunnen Valley that you're not really able to get in the town of Lauterbrunnen. Uh, we went up there, beautiful. So I'd highly recommend making a little pit stop in Wangen if you can. I know the tr tickets from Lauterbrunnen are only like seven or ten dollars for the train ticket, or you can just hike up. Make sure you go there. So after Wangen, made our way down and we drove over to the other valley up to the infamous town of Grindelwald. Now Grindelwald is one of my favorite places in Switzerland. What I love about Grindelwald is the view of Mount Eiger. It is like one of the biggest mountains I've ever seen. It is just 
massive. I was there about two years ago and I hiked to this, this really crazy peak, able to get some of the coolest drone shots I've ever gotten. I was able to get just brilliant views of Mount Iger and also on the other side there were some really cool lakes I was able to film. So yeah, so I'd highly recommend making a stop to Grindelwald, you won't regret it. After Grindelwald, we headed over to the beautiful lake of Ois Chinesi. Hope I said that right. Located by the city of Kandersteg, um, it's about a five mile hike round trip. It's a moderate hike, but it is very steep. You're gonna walk up this road. Once you get to the lake, your mind is gonna be blown. I've never seen a lake with such a big backdrop as this lake. I mean, the mountains surrounding it are so huge. Yeah, me and my buddy Danny, we hadn't showered in days, so we took the opportunity to take a dip in the lake, swim around, and just have a good time. I definitely recommend making a pit stop here. After Lake Oishinesi, we're gonna head over to the west side of Switzerland to the beautiful town of Le Diablere. It's about a two hour car ride from Geneva or about a three hour car ride from Zurich. You'll get to this town and you'll hike to this massive bowl. When I did it, I counted over 15 waterfalls. I mean, it was just blowing my mind. We hiked to the bowl. I was able to get some beautiful drone shots in the meadow. And then I hiked up to the rock and I was able to find my drone around. I actually almost lost my drone here. I was flying it and it ran out of battery and I did an emergency landing and I had no clue where it was at. Surrounding mountains have the highest peak in western Switzerland. So after Le Diable, we're going to head over to the beautiful city of Geneva. Um, this is one of my favorite cities in Switzerland. I had the opportunity to live here for two months about two summers ago when I did an internship with uh, human rights groups. I made videos for them. But Geneva is famous for having the United Nations. It's just a really cool place with a lot of action going on. They have the infamous Jet Deu. Basically, it's just this giant fountain that shoots water hundreds of feet up in the air. And it's pretty cool. Lake Geneva is awesome. I used to just go swim and hang out there in the evenings. I, I found a sunken bow I used to always swim to. I also found some cool places, jump off the bridges into the water. And I mean, it was just a good time. Highly recommend visiting Geneva if you're in the west side of Switzerland. After Geneva, we're gonna head over to one of my favorite cliff jump spots in Switzerland, to Valle Versasca. So Valle Versasca, located in the south side of Switzerland, near the town Lugano, which is just borders Italy. So you're gonna drive up this little canyon and you're gonna get to Valle Versasca. And what it is, it's these two bridges overhangs one of the most beautiful rivers I've ever seen. It's probably some of the clearest river water in the world. I've been there several times. I love jumping off that bridge, doing some, some backflips, and then I also like to go swim in the water. It is freezing cold, but it's super clear, and it's just a rejuvenating experience. I'd have to say Viver Saska is one of my all-time favorite swimming and cliff jumping locations in the world. If you're in southern Switzerland, make the drive up there and you won't regret it. So now for our final location, we are going to head to the beautiful town of Zermatt. Zermatt is famous for the Matterhorn Mountain. So to get to Zermatt, you can't drive to the city itself. You have to drive nearby and then you'll take a train up because there's no cars in the city. And then you get to the town. And you'll be able to see the Matterhorn and it's just going to blow your mind. It's so cool. You can take a bunch of gondolas up to the Matterhorn or other surrounding locations. I was being a cheapskate and didn't want to spend $60 to $100 to get to the Matterhorn. I do regret that. So if you are going, I would recommend you do it. Um, or get a Swiss pass and you'll be able to get discounts on the gondolas. What? I 